Hello, I'm Dr. Randall Seacrest, your host for eOrthopod TV. Today I have with me Dr. William Seeds. Dr. Seeds is an orthopedic surgeon board certified from Ashtabula, Ohio. Dr. Seeds did his medical school training at Cincinnati School of Medicine. He then went on to complete an orthopedic surgery residency at St. Luke Roosevelt Hospitals in New York City, part of Columbia University. Good afternoon, Dr. Seeds. Good afternoon, Randy. Well, thanks for coming. What I would like to discuss today is, a, is what I would say is a relatively new procedure done in orthopedics, hip arthroscopy. Now, we've heard uh, for years hip, uh, knee arthroscopy, shoulder arthroscopy, arthroscopy of the ankle and other joints, but the hip has always been a little bit difficult simply because it's so deep and so difficult to get to and so tight that it was very difficult to do anything in. My understanding is that that's changing today, and we've got new techniques that we can use to actually see inside the joint very reliably and also to get instruments into that joint to actually treat certain conditions of the hip. Is that correct? Yes. We the, the techniques have improved to where we can distract the hip and get into the joint mm -hmm. with better equipment and be able to visualize the problems that we may anticipate are in the hip and, and be able to actually treat those those symptoms mm -hmm. while we're there. And for folks who have never heard of the term arthroscopy, let's talk a little bit about exactly what this is. Uh, it's been around for a long time, but describe what the whole concept of arthroscopy and arthroscopic surgery is in any joint. Well, it's a, it's a minimally invasive way of getting into a joint where we basically are taking um, long tubular implant or instruments that are cameras and we're going into a joint through incisions that are the size of my pinky and we're able to visualize directly what's happening to that joint. Is it cartilage damage? Is it, is it soft tissue labral damage? Mm -hmm. um, is it a loose body? What's happening to create these early symptoms of pain? Mm -hmm. And we use that to visualize and to also treat. Mm -hmm. And it, it's been a diagnostic tool and a therapeutic tool for us in uh, treating disease in the knee, shoulder, ankle, wrist, and hip now mm -hmm. that we're able to use this in uh, diagnosing and catching things maybe a little earlier than we, we did in the past. Mm -hmm. You know, it's interesting. When I was in medical school so many years ago, arthroscopy was just being used in the knee and you actually had to actually look through the scope with your eye. Nowadays we attach it to a small camera, we've got these closed cameras and, and can actually hold the camera so that you don't have to look through it in the eye or through the eye and, and project it on a TV or a computer screen or whatever. And I'm assuming this is what we're doing with arthroscopy as well. We're actually projecting that image on a TV screen and watching the TV while we in some ways play a video game manipulate the instruments uh, uh, in the hip itself. Randy, you, you, you exactly hit the point well. I mean, it's why my kids wonder why I can compete against them in Xbox and, <laughs> and so forth. It's, it's because we are, we are virtually looking at a monitor and using our tools to maneuver and facilitate around a joint and treat something while we're visualizing this on the screen. And, um, it's why maybe I'm better than they are at their Xbox games, mm -hmm. but I, I can't say that. Um, it, it's interesting, too, that um, I think that in the hip specifically, there are new diseases that I think we recognize now similar to what happened in the knee and in the shoulder as we began to look inside um, using these cameras, get better visualization. We actually see better because... The, the joint was magnified, lots of light in it. We saw things we had never seen before, never assumed were going on in the knee. What I've seen over the last few years is that the same thing is occurring in the hip joint. Yes. In the old days, if you wanted to make an incision and actually open up a hip joint to see inside, it was a huge incision. Yes. I mean, it was a, an incision that was probably six to eight inches long. Yes. Even if you were going to simply drain the hip for an infection or something like that, committed you to making a six to eight inch incision, destroying a lot of tissue. Yes. So with the arthroscopy, we're now able to see in there and do some of these things without that huge incision. It's made it a minimally invasive process where we can, the, the imaging studies, x-ray help us, the MRI hasn't 
caught up yet to being able to facilitate maybe what we think may be happening in the hip joint. It's just another test, but getting in there and looking at the joint specifically and treating the problem has been, mm -hmm. has, you know, it's earlier intervention. Let's talk a little bit about the rationale. When, when a patient comes into your office and you may eventually utilize this new technique, hip arthroscopy, for this patient, typically what sorts of complaints and then what sorts of conditions are you using hip arthroscopy to gain either information or treat? Well, the, the, the patient is typically, is, has possibly been through and seen many other physicians for this enduring hip pain. It's, uh, they have a continued catching or a locking symptom in the hip. Um, they have a, a groin pain. They, they can actually take their hand and put it right over the joint and specifically show you where their pain is. It may be mimicked or in, increased with sitting in a chair. It may be climbing stairs. Um, and it's something that they have not been able to improve and they may have an x-ray that looks normal and they just haven't, they've been through modalities of treatment, therapy, manipulation, and the problem continues. So I typically don't see these patients early in the spectrum. I see them after they've been through they've kind of been through the gambit of treatment and, and they're, they're still having this process and not wondering, well, what's happening to me? Mm. Um, and we're, we're, in, we're getting closer to seeing people sooner, but it's, it's those type of patients that I see and, and it's then asking and, and trying to make sure that we're ruling out all the other problems that, that possibly hip arthroscopy has no, no benefit in. And, um, in finding the diagnosis, but we're using it diagnostically and we're using it to treat the problem. You know, it's interesting because within my career of the last 30 years, I can remember the only tool we really had with evaluating x-rays was a, or evaluating hip problem was x-ray. And we would take an x-ray and the only information we could say is the hip looks fine on x-ray. Then we got an MRI scan and the MRI scan started showing us early degeneration in the articular cartilage, something we could not see until it was already worn away. So we could not see these problems on x-ray, and we couldn't really tell what was going on with the patient. All we knew was they, they had hip pain. Right. And, and these problems went undiagnosed. Right. We started picking some of them up, like tears in the cartilage inside the hip, the labrum, right. and these early degenerations with the MRI scan. And now with the, the arthroscopy, we can actually look at them, similar to what we, what we could do in the knee. Yes, and, and what's interesting, Randy, is that actually we now look at these x-rays with more interpretation of where we're rec retrospectively, we're looking back. Now we know what it looks like in the hip joint. We're actually seeing more in an x-ray that we didn't actually pick up before. So we're actually comparing and being able to sort of understand what those little fine things are showing us. We're smarter in looking at the version of the cup. We're looking at impingement symptoms that before we thought may have been minimal degenerative changes that now we know are, boy, these are really processes that can cause these early changes where it's always been there on x-ray. We just haven't realized it as, as we do now retrospectively looking back after being in the hip joint, seeing the disease process, and now reevaluating these x-rays. Mm -hmm. So x-ray gives us a tremendous amount of information now Typically, maybe we didn't appreciate at the time. Now, tell me this. What's, what's different about hip arthroscopy in general doing hip arthroscopy? My understanding is, this, is that you have to use a significant amount of, of traction. You, you uh, alluded to the term distraction. To get that joint pulled away enough to where you've got enough space inside between the ball and the socket to get a camera in there and actually see. How do you do that? You place the patient on a special table to, uh, to set them up to where you're distracting that hip under an image machine mm -hmm. where you're looking at the amount of, dis uh, of that ball and socket coming apart. So you actually put them on sort of a rack pr pr uh, table uh, similar to what we use to set fractures and that sort of thing. Yes, yes. And then the imaging machine you're talking about, you're not talking about the TV camera you're talking about the x-ray. We're talking about a live imaging x-ray machine that can show us live right there and then okay. how much is distraction is occurring. Some of us will use measurements where we can actually tell what, how much pressure is being pulled on the hip. You can gauge it. Uh, 
Some of us use that information to tell the amount of distraction we need. But typically, uh, most of us look at the amount of distraction within, within the joint and what you need to get those, mm. those uh, scopes in the joint. And once you, once you get inside the joint, what happens then? I mean, what are you, what are you looking for? Well, we're, we're looking for globally what's happening within the hip joint. Is there, we're looking for, is there cartilage damage? Is there cushion damage around what's called the labrum of the hip? Are there loose bodies involved? Is there a, is there a syn synovitis? Is there inflammation in that joint to explain these hip problems? And then once you see that inflammation, uh, you mentioned loose bodies, for example, and, and I'm, I'm assuming that, that what you're referring to with loose body is fragments of cartilage or bone that are floating around inside the joint, yes. maybe getting caught inside the joint and causing pain. Yes. It, it, it seems reasonable to remove those using the arthroscope. What about these other conditions? Can you actually treat those other conditions um, with the arthroscope once you see them? Yes, we, we, we actually have the ability now to treat these problems with cleaning up these uh, tears of the labrum. Mm -hmm. uh, there, there are advancements in techniques now where you can repair the labrums if, it, if, if that needs to be done. Um, you can clean up the cartilage that may be catching in the joint where you can smooth down the cartilage and, and slow down the process of that wearing down of the joint. And how successful has this been? Has this drastically changed your ability to actually treat these early problems causing hip pain? Yeah, absolutely. I, I think it's, it's earlier intervention. I mean, you're, you're, you may not be essentially curing a problem, but you're sure slowing down the process. And you're, uh, if it's a cartilage problem, you're, you're slowing that process of wear down. Uh, if it's a loose body, you're making a tremendous difference. If it's a labral tear, you're making a significant difference. And, and, and it's the patient testament afterwards that, that you know that, gosh, we've, we've actually made a difference here earlier in intervention as we do in the knee and the shoulder. You know, it's funny, in some, in some ways it may just be enough to give the patient an answer because so many times in the past, patients who you didn't have a good answer and obviously they didn't have enough problem to really warrant making that big incision and just go looking in the hip joint. Now we can at least give them an answer and tell them what's going on. Right, and, and it's, it, it's that patient, it, it's that information that really helps the patient and mm -hmm. they've been told they had a muscle strain or it's a, it, it hasn't, it just hasn't resolved and they need to know that there is the, um, there is the ability to diagnostically tell you that, hey, there is something going on here and, and that's an evolution of, of, of this process of that we're going through right now and understanding that we have options in, in treating this process. Now, in terms of the procedure itself, I'm assuming that this is an outpatient procedure. Yes. That you don't need to stay in the hospital for. Similar to other arthroscopic procedures, you come in to a day surgery center, have the procedure, go home. That's correct. How long does it take you to get over a hip arthroscopy? When can I be resuming normal activities? Well, I, I think it's just like any other arthroscopy. It depends on what you're treating. Um, typically, we'll protect their weight bearing after the surgery um, and then progress them in a therapy program to get them back to activity. The sutures usually come out anywhere from seven to ten days. Um, and it really is based on what their pain level is and what we've done in progressing them back to normal activities. Mm -hmm. And that can be as quick as ten days to two to four to six weeks. And I'm sure it's a lot of, depends on what you've done inside the hip joint yes. as well, yes. how long that needs to heal. Yes. What type of anesthesia do you normally use for hip arthroscopy? Is this a general anesthetic or is this something that uh, can be done under a local anesthetic perhaps or a regional anesthetic such as a spinal block yeah. or an epidural? Uh, it's, it's either typically done under a spinal anesthetic or a general anesthetic. It's not a it's typically not something that we do in a regional type of block because of the distraction that we're doing with the hip joint. And so that could be painful? Uh, well, we're, we're trying to make that, we want those muscles not contracting or working against us when we're distracting the hip joint. I see, I see. So it's more relaxation than, than just uh, numb is, numbing the area up and that sort of stuff. Right, and, and we try to give the patient the ability to sleep through the process so they don't have that anxiety of, of, un, of, of not being able to tell what's happening and
and feeling that process of, uh, of distraction at the time. Let's talk a little bit about potential downsides to this procedure. Are there any significant complications, or is this a fairly straightforward um, risk-free procedure? You know, there are risks of infection that can occur, and uh, there is that distraction that we do where there may be some temporary nerve involvement um, around that area of distraction that is usually temporary and transient and comes back, and that's something that we're cognizant of. Um, and that, and that comes from stretching the nerves and they stop functioning for a while yes. and then recover? Yes, yes, exactly. And um, I, I think those are two of the bigger components of, of any surgery. Um, and uh, the other typical things that we look out for, and that's uh, any type of blood clots postoperatively. Um, and I, I think that's pretty much it. Well, this is wonderful, good information. Um, Anything we have not covered about hip arthroscopy that you think patients who may be looking at hip arthroscopy or have hip pain that uh, has not been diagnosed at this point need to know about this procedure? I think it's important that they get to an orthopedic physician to, to, to actually get engaged earlier in the process of treatment where typically we've seen these people down the road. We're starting to see them a lot sooner. We're trying to make the primary care physicians more aware of what we're able to do now, and also the uh, chiropractors with manipulation and so forth. We're trying to get educating our own, our own um, uh, peers in, in what's available. It's just getting, it's, it's, it's getting that patient to you sooner where we have a, the potential of, of dealing with this problem before it, it continues to evolve. And where do you think the future of hip arthroscopy lies? I mean, Obviously, it's being used more and more these days. Um, are the, uh, is the future primarily in refinement of the equipment? Do you think that we'll refine the techniques that we use to fix some of these problems? What do you think we need in order to move this forward? Well, I, I think it's the instrumentation that's going to continue to evolve to improve and, and give us the ability to get into the joint space even easier than we are now. Um, the ability to reach areas in the hip uh, to treat these tears and, and cartilage changes. Um, we're, we're actually working within compartments of the hip joint now, too, where we're just not in the hip joint, but we're in other compartments around the hip treating parts of what we believe is the disease process, too. So I mean, we're learning a lot right now into, into ways that may continue to potentially um, inhibit the progression of, of certain cartilage disorders of, uh, of these hip joints and, and avoiding bigger procedures in the future. So I, I think there's a tremendous amount of uh, potential uh, with any least invasive process that, that is in, in an evolutionary change. Well, well, thanks for the information. It's been wonderful. Um, I'd love to have you back five years from now and really look at where we've come with hip arthroscopy because it, it sounds like the next five years are going to see some major advances in this new technique. Absolutely, and, I, and I'll be back. Thanks again. Bet. Thanks for watching today. If you have questions about the topic that we discussed today or any orthopedic topic, be sure to visit eorthopod.com. And if you're an orthopedic surgeon or healthcare provider interested in participating as a guest on eorthopod TV, you'll also find instructions on how to apply to become a guest on eorthopod TV. Thanks for watching.